and welcome to Creative Magic Club. Together, we'll discover inspirational stories of creative entrepreneurs living out their dreams, doing the work they are most passionate about, and building wealth in magical and fun ways. While building a six-figure income as a writer and coach, helping other women to launch their dream businesses, I've connected with so many incredible people and seen it proven again and again that you can thrive financially doing whatever it is you are passionate about. I am here to share life-changing strategies for mindset, making money, and reaching more people with your work in a business and life filled with creativity, freedom, and fun. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm so excited to introduce my guest for today. We have Jacqueline Gallo, who is the CEO of Clarity and Action Consulting, a women's empowerment company on a mission to help women create lives they love. She's also a two times best selling author, TEDx speaker, and host of the popular Spark Your Light podcast. Hi, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. So please tell us how did you end up doing the work that you do today? It's a really beautiful story of divine timing and being redirected to the work that I am meant to do. So it started when I was in college, I did an internship in marketing and I thought that was my dream job. And I actually realized while I was working that job that I really wanted to work for myself. I wanted to feel more fulfilled and like I was working towards my own goals. So I pursued entrepreneurship. I launched my first business idea. It was a product that it was actually a plate and it was encouraging healthy eating. It totally failed and I knew it pretty soon into it, but I had spent $10,000 on it. I completely emptied my bank account. I borrowed a little bit of money from my parents. So I was at a crossroads because I'm like, what do I do? I have no more money. I already have one failed idea, but I was a college student. So I had a little bit of, it's okay. It's okay to fail. And also being a first time entrepreneur, I thought, well, everyone fails. Failing one time is totally normal. So I had enough courage to get back up and keep going. And my next idea was to build an app, but I didn't have any money. So I fundraised on Kickstarter and I raised $20,000 for the app. And while it sounds like a lot, I got prices and quotes from big app development companies. And most of them were above six figures. So I found college students who were thrilled about the $20,000 And they built the app for me. A few months after the launch, we were beta testing it. And it also became an epic failure. This time, it wasn't that the product was totally done, a total waste of time. Let's let's move on. It was that in order to create this type of technology, we need a lot more money, a lot more strategy. There were just a lot of things I didn't foresee because I didn't have experience in the tech world. So I would have needed to fundraise more traditionally with seed round and venture capital, having mentors in this space and maybe like co-founders. It just would have been a totally different path. And it was at this point where the failure felt so heavy because I had already failed once before. I now had essentially no proof that I had any reason to believe that I was going to be successful because all I had done was failed. All I had done was lost money, lost other people's money, money that people, you know, invested in my company and Kickstarter isn't actually an investment. They're buying something in exchange for their contribution to your company. But still, I really felt like I let a lot of people down and that I should probably just give up because what if I don't have what it takes and maybe Maybe I've had all these failures because I'm being redirected to just get a job and give up on my dreams. And when I look back now, I get really curious about that moment because it's a pivotal moment in my life where I decide to keep going, but there are a lot of people who don't. There are a lot of people who are in similar circumstances where they failed multiple times. They don't have any reason to believe they're going to be successful and they decide to give up. So when I was giving a TEDx talk in 2020, I decided to write about that moment and analyze what was it that gave me the courage to keep going. 
And I read back my old journal entries to see what stood out as things that maybe I had inside of me that maybe other people did not And what I found was while there was a lot of pain and a lot of hurt in these journal entries, there was also a lot of hope. And I would find sentences like, but I know I can do this. And even though I'm afraid, I don't want to give up on myself or my dreams. And what I realized is that it's not about being fearless. What it's about is having that self-belief and specifically more self-belief than fear. So the courage equation, which is what my TEDx is about, is courage equals belief greater than fear. And we could talk all about what creates self-belief and that's a totally different conversation. But in that moment, I had enough self-belief to keep going. And these failures were beautiful, divine redirections for me because what it led me to is realizing that I wanted to be a speaker. I actually came across a Facebook ad and I was at the point in my life where I was so low, nothing was working. I was just open to things. And I saw this ad that said like, get paid to speak. And I was like, I'm great at speaking. I would be so good at that. That sounds fun. Let me learn more. And I went to this webinar. I bought this course. I was also deeply invested in personal development because nothing was working. And I would have never started speaking and had the inspiration to create my company today to help empower women without going through my own process of empowerment and without being in that like open, receptive energy of what was next for me. And when I leaned into that, it was essentially like a magical manifestation, quantum leap. I 10 x my business income in a year. I booked myself every week at different colleges across the country to speak. I took on uh, my first coaching clients and the rest is history. That was back in 2019 and I've continued to grow since then. So it's been a really beautiful journey of redirection towards exactly where I'm meant to be. And I really believe that failures do this for us. What an amazing story. Um, Such like incredibly different business ideas too, which I think is amazing. And I'm curious how... Um, your experience of going through those failures, like what are some of the the key ways it's changed the way that you make decisions in your business now? Yeah, I'm much more intentional about what I'm creating and why, the cost of it. I'm much more intentional about my vision for my life. So something I realized like when I was building the app was I don't really want to be a tech CEO, but I didn't think that through, I just had an idea for an app and thought, I want to have a successful business and I'm willing to do what it takes. The more I've lived day to day as a full-time entrepreneur, because I, I was full-time from the very beginning. So I was the first year I was taking college classes still. So I was a full-time student. So I guess you could say my business was part-time, but once I graduated college, I worked on my business full-time and there were times where I desperately needed money. So I did like odd end jobs, side jobs here and there, but business was full-time and anything else was side. And I've really figured out the life I want to live. And I've started to make decisions that are in alignment with that, as opposed to this desperate feeling of, I just want to be successful. So I'm willing to do anything to create some sort of successful business. It's not like that anymore. I also learned a lot about testing about not spending a ton of money on something that you don't know is going to work. So I do things much more lean in my business today, and I'm much more conscious of my business's investments. And I make lots of investments. I mean, I've invested like over six figures, probably if you add it all up in like coaching courses and things. So I'm always investing, but I'm intentional about it versus in the past, I just kind of invested in things because I thought I was supposed to, because that's what it was going to take to get the product to life. And I didn't really think about the consequences to the bottom line of the business. Um, And so I'm just, I'm just a much more empowered CEO as a result of it all, I think. Yeah, I think this is such um, an important conversation. And I mean, that clarity is something that you kind of only get to through having made decisions not from the right place. You know, I've definitely been there myself, but I kind of see failures as when we're trying to go for something that's an external like marker of success or that we think we should desire versus something that we actually desire. And I know that's something, you know, that's really the focus of 
my conversation with myself and my conversation with my clients because sometimes it's challenging to like cut that voice from all of the noise and really get clear on do I actually want this and you know if I'm taking these actions that I'm feeling pulled towards or this vision that I'm feeling pulled towards like what will my life actually look like what will it feel like and is it going to make me happy because sometimes we actually don't know in business right like when we're creating something that we have never experienced before. I think there's always that little part of us that's afraid that it's not going to be fun or that it's going to be hard or that we're going to have to do things that we don't want to do. And, um, but you, you know, when we tune into things that are genuine desires for us, I always notice like those are the things that work easier than anything else. It's really like getting to that clarity, which involves going through a ton of failures. And I think it's so amazing that you, just like jumped in with two feet first and like raised all of that money for your, for your visions. And that's such, um, it's an inspiring story. Thank you. And I completely agree with everything you said. I feel like we need to have those experiences where we're leading into things that we, we don't even know that we're doing it because we should, or because we think it's going to work and we're just so desperate we think it's an inspired idea, right? And so even just like differentiating that inner voice is really empowering. So I love that that's something that you focus on. And I think it's not talked about enough. Yeah, especially for women. And, you know, like my experience of first beginning to own my desires, particularly around business, particularly around money and like the size of my vision and my goals and my dreams and my desires I started releasing so much shame out of my body because there was still a part of me that believed that I wasn't worthy or deserving of having big dreams or big goals or that I wasn't good enough just from, you know, the bullshit programming that we pick up around being a woman or, you know, being a creative or all of the stories that we internalize and use them as, you know, a reason to disconnect from what it is that we truly desire because we were taught that we shouldn't believe in them or that they're not good enough. And it was a really like a very visceral experience when I started that process of actually speaking out what I desire and those things that, you know, that you do tend to have the most fear around simply because you care about them the most. And like those ideas that won't go away that, you know, you only notice if you're really consistently listening to yourself and then putting yourself in a space with, other people who are willing to hear you and, you know, create a safe space to support whatever it is that you're feeling and thinking and desiring. And then seeing that every single one of us has a, has different desires. And, you know, some of the things that keep are reoccurring desires for me, nobody else has. And that, you know, seeing the difference in like hearing another woman speak her desires and her vision and her dream for her life and seeing that it's totally different from mine is I I found something that I know I have and my clients have found really validating because then we're like, oh, okay, well, like I'm going to pay attention more to my desires because obviously they're right for me because it's, it's not just the same desires. Like we think everybody, sometimes we think we all have to go to, um, for like the same external, you know, ticking the boxes of like whatever, getting married, buying a house, having a six-figure income, having a multi-six-figure income, um, traveling the world. But actually some people don't want those things. And actually some people want very, very, very different things. And so I think the more we're open with and share what it is that we truly desire, even when we feel resistance or shame or, you know, whatever it is that we've been carrying around them, it's just so liberating for everybody. I love that. And I think that it's, so important in this industry, personal development, entrepreneurship to remind people that we don't all want the same things and you don't have to want the things that someone else is wanting and you don't have to model someone else's life. I think that it's amazing to have mentors and people that inspire you and that you look up to. And sometimes there are going to be mentors who are doing the things you want to do. And that's amazing. But I think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in like, I have to do it the way that they did it. And there's no one way and there's no right way. And the best way is listening to your own desires and your own intuition, because I believe that's the fastest path to success. Totally. There's always a fun way to do it. And the only way that's going to be fun for you is your way, (laughs) the way that you want to do it. Um, So I would love to know, like, what is the main message on your heart that you wish more people knew about going through failure and, um, you know, what's possible on the other side of that? 
Yeah. So there's kind of two things here. The first is how to view failure in your life and reframe the way you see it. Because when you reframe the way that you see it, you're going to be more open to scary opportunities and scary opportunities. The ones where you have to put yourself out there, the ones that are filled with risk are usually the ones that have high reward, right? Are usually the ones that are going to push your boundary of what you think is possible for you, but you have to have enough courage and confidence to take those actions. And when the worst case scenario is failure, but failure is actually a good thing, then you're not so afraid. So that's the first thing. So how do we do that? So my personal definition of failure is a lesson or a redirection. I'm going to dissect both sides of it. So a lesson means to me that there is something that is absolutely necessary for me to learn in order to be living the life I want to live. So if I want to have a million dollar business, it means that this is a lesson that it will be impossible for me to become the CEO of a million dollar company unless I learn this thing, right? And so by learning the lessons as fast as I can, that's how I'm going to get to the million dollar business, right? So I might as well fail often, fail forward, right? And learn all these lessons and soak them up because that's the thing that's going to get me there. So I don't see it as a deterrent. I actually see it as a tool to get there. So that's how I see lessons. And then redirections, I see them as those pieces that are helping you find clarity on that vision, on where you're really going, on where you're meant to go. So for me, a lot of my earlier failures were redirections, getting me closer to this work that I'm clearly meant to do, right? So when you see failure that way, you're more willing to throw yourself headfirst into it. The second thing that I think is really important about failure is knowing how to get back up and be resilient when you do fail. Because if we're talking about throwing yourself into opportunities where it's likely that you're going to fail, you want to feel equipped with a toolbox to get back up so it's not so scary. And it's actually pretty simple in the moment. So my first tool is kind of like your emergency room. So you've already failed, right? You've broken a bone and you're going to get rushed to the hospital and go to the emergency room and they're going to help repair it. It's not going to be fixed immediately, right? You're going to have to wear a cast for however many weeks or months, but it's something you can do in that moment to make it a little bit better. So when you're in the midst of a failure, what you can do is you can simply ask yourself, what is the next step? And usually when it's a really hard failure, the next step is going to be something like taking care of yourself. I remember for me, that moment where I really wanted to give up on my business, the next step was like, take a shower, put on some comfortable clothes, eat something. Because I was crying for days, not even taking care of my basic health, right? And then after that, then you ask yourself the same question again. Okay, now what's the next step? The next day, the next step was, I'm going to sleep in, I'm going to get up slow, I'm going to do some gratitude journaling. And I'm going to write down a few ideas for how I could continue my business, how I could make a pivot, just a few ideas, a general brainstorm. Okay. Once I do that, what's the next step after that? Maybe I'm going to pick one of the ideas. And then what's the first step for this new idea, right? And so one step at a time, all you need is enough courage to just take that next step. You don't need enough courage to be 20 steps ahead from now. And you don't even need to look there because a lot of the things that you might think about are what I call future problems. And from my experience, a study that I have created is that about 50% of future problems never actually manifest as problems. So you might as well not think about them. You might as well just think about what's next. So that's what you want to do when you're in a failure. The other part of this is more like maintenance. It's more like going to the doctor once a year to get your body checked. And oh my gosh, your doctor might catch that a certain level is really low. Let's say you're really low. I don't, I'm not a doctor. Uh, Sarah, isn't, isn't your uh, husband a doctor? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Okay. So he could probably talk about this, Um, but let's just say a certain level is really low, makes your bones more likely to break or something. So they're going to prevent it rather than having to go to the emergency room with the broken bone, right? So the prevention is building resilience as a daily or weekly practice. So this is really simple. All you need to do is do hard things, things that feel really difficult and really uncomfortable for you. 
and prove to yourself by doing those hard things that you are capable of anything you set your mind to, that pain is often temporary and you can do anything for however many minutes, right? Or seconds. And that simply, you can do hard things. So some ways to do this. My two favorite ways are exercise and cold showers. So I take cold showers whenever I am having a bad day, bad week, when I'm feeling like I'm not enough, when I'm feeling like I can't climb that mountain, then you're going to shower sometime in the next 24 hours. So when you do make it freezing cold, climb that mountain for three minutes. My showers are usually like 15, but when they're cold, they're more like three minutes because it's very uncomfortable. Right. And when you get out, you're going to think it wasn't so bad. I did that really uncomfortable thing. I can probably handle some of these uncomfortable things I'm going to face in my day right now, right? Exercise, same sort of thing. So find some sort of exercise that challenges you. So I go to Soul Cycle. I love it. It pushes me every time. And I like it because you can you can push yourself through like turning up the wheel and making it more difficult. And so I purposely push myself to almost my limit, right? Because by the end of the class, I'm like, how did I get through that? That was so hard. Wow my week is going to be a breeze, right? Other um, ways you can push yourself with exercise. I always tell clients run a mile longer than you think you can. If you know how to do push-ups, and you can do, let's say a certain amount, let's say you can do five push-ups, try to do 10, right? And just prove to yourself that I'm capable. Anytime you're faced with something that feels harder and comfortable, and it's something that you want to do, and it's going to move you towards the life you want, do it anyway. And just continue creating that evidence and proof in your brain that you are strong, that you're capable, that you can do hard things, that you can get through anything, especially most things are temporary. Everything typically is temporary and you can get through anything for a temporary period of time. So with the maintenance and the preventative care of building resilience, you are now more empowered that when the failures hit, they don't feel so hard. They don't feel so heavy because you know you can handle them. So I've given a lot of tools to you. And what I want to say is just pick what resonates. You don't have to do it all. If you take one simple thing away that I said, that's great. It's going to change your life. It all adds up. Don't put pressure on yourself. This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be easy. Uh, So I just want to leave you with that since I did throw a lot at you. I love that. Thank you for sharing all that. And um, something else that I would add to that conversation is, kind of what you were talking about, about the redirection that's really helped me is, you know, like you said before, being very intentional and kind of lean in your decision-making. And because what I notice is when I identify a desire, usually a solution or or an idea that's aligned with me achieving that desire will pop up. And then that will be kind of the place where the growth lessons start to happen, right? Where you really commit to taking action, like you say, getting uncomfortable, And, you know, as we start to face those failures where we like, you know, create a program idea and we launch it and nobody buys it or, um, you know, we go weeks without signing a client that, you know, it's in those moments where all the questioning starts to happen of like, like you mentioned, you had about yourself, like, am I even cut out for this? Is this even going to work? Is, you know, and questioning, like, am I doing this for the right reasons? Is this really a desire for me? And I think it's, um, it's really helpful to have those clear goals written down. And I've been through that many times where, you know, and I've come back to my initial intention and really questioned it. And I've got to really connect with myself and see that actually, yes, like this is still a desire for me, in which case I get to move through this. And in moving through that, something that I wasn't very good at at the beginning, which was feeling the pain of the failure Mm -hmm. and really allowing myself to sit with those uncomfortable emotions that are coming up. Because the way I see it is, is like every time you go through a quote unquote failure where our insecurities are literally being squeezed out of us and like any shame that we're holding about ourselves, any disbelief, any, um, any way that we've been outsourcing our power to other people and not taking full responsibility for, you know, our capabilities, our desires and our results. Those stories are the things that are kind of bubbling to the surface to, that really make it uncomfortable. And it's, you know, in sitting with that and feeling that and looking at that and being like, what truths have I been holding about myself? What emotional patterns have been going on underneath the surface that, you know, this has created an opportunity for me to look at and to shift and to let go of 
like that's where the most growth happens. And I definitely have tried to avoid that as much as possible. Like I think most people do because it's so freaking uncomfortable. And, you know, I've often tried to hide out in just taking action and pushing and like running in a different direction or going after a shiny object that kind of feels more satisfying in the moment, but actually giving ourselves the opportunity to sit there and look at what comes up in those moments of what feels like a crisis and what feels like your whole world is crashing down around you. Um, you know, those are the great, where we harvest the lessons. Those are, we get the insights. Those are where we really shift and do that embodiment work to become the person who, like you say, has more resilience and is able to step into doing the work to create the result at like a much higher level and with so much more ease. So I just want to talk about that and kind of normalize this idea of having a breakdown because I found the moments where I've really broken down, where I've really felt like my whole world is crashing down around me, um, have always led to the best insights, the, the biggest shift and, you know, the most growth. And I think that's such a, a normal part of entrepreneurship because we do just grow at such a rapid rate, right? Because we, most of us have really big dreams and there's a lot of growth that's required in order to, in order to get there. So I just wanted to, to add that into the conversation as well. I love it. I completely agree. Processing emotions is so important. And it's something I think in personal development that sometimes either just isn't talked about or people misunderstand and think it means brush everything under the rug. It does not. Feel your feelings, process them, release them, rewrite the beliefs. Yes to everything. Something I thought of when you were talking, when you talked about the breakdown is the breakdown always leads to the breakthrough, right? It's like so much magic. And I had this experience recently, actually. Um, I have been on this like new wave of just my next level self. That's how I would describe it. Like I am so in my power, probably more than I ever have been in my life. And my husband notices it. And we were talking the other day at dinner and I asked him, what do you think created that? Because I like to hear his perspective and I like to really reflect on things that are going well. And I can understand the steps that helped me get there because in the past, I would just think like, oh, that was a fluke or I was just lucky or whatever. But now I really see when things are going well, like I'm creating all of this. So anyways, we were talking and he said pain. And I was like, so good because I was really struggling at the end of last month, just a lot of pain, a lot of frustration, and a lot of inner work around my business and what I wanted and where I was going and what wasn't working. And it created so much magic. So it's just a reminder to just allow the pain because it really does make us move and it helps us move in the right direction. I love that. I kind of, an analogy that always seems so appropriate to me is birth. Like when we're giving birth, or well, I've never given birth, but when women give birth, there are the contractions and then there's the push and like the momentum and the movement and the contractions are really painful, but they're a part of that process of expansion. It's like you contract and then you expand a little bit, bit more on the other side of that contraction. And I feel like it's a very similar process when we are creating like a business or a creative project or something new that that growth process just kind of involves a contraction and then an expansion. So we just got to keep breathing through it and <laughs> keep going, keep taking those cold showers, whatever it is that gets you through it. So good. Such a good metaphor. I love it. I love this conversation so much. I think it's super, super valuable. And we need to be talking about and normalizing failure and breakdowns as a part of growth. So thank you so much for coming on here and sharing all of your incredible wisdom. Please tell us where can people find you? What have you got going on at the moment? Yeah. So if you love podcasts, you could check out my podcast, Spark Your Light. And Sarah is going to be on the podcast very soon. So you'll definitely want to subscribe and check out her episode. And you can also find me on Instagram at Jacqueline double underscore Gallo. And if you want to learn more about me, you can check out my website, JacquelineGallo.com. Amazing. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe and share this episode and support the show. And thank you so much for being here and we'll see you next week. Bye. For more inspirational content, head over to my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting and subscribing.